this to do with Australia, all these American examples? Because most of the thinking behind Agenda 21 came from American environmental fanatics. And so what you see in their documentation there is already beginning to creep in in Australia. Hands up all those who live in a house where the householder owns the house. Yes, about half. Well, you're in trouble. Because one of the proposals in Agenda 21 is to take away all rights of property, to nationalise effectively all property. And let me give you an example of where this is already happening and how it is being done. Which is no longer being done openly. They tried that and they failed and the Berlin Wall came down. So now they've realised that people don't like communism. So they're putting it in by stealth instead. If you go to Yorubadala Council, on the coast not far from Canberra, where I'm about to go, what the Yorubadala Council have done is a test bed for what is going to be rolled out right across Australia at local level, by stealth, unless somebody stops it there. And what they're doing is this. They are doing overlays on the entire map of that shire which mark out forever various areas which are biodiversity protection areas. And if your house is in one of those, bad luck. Because if you want to build a house next door or a shed or anything like that, you can't. But what's worse is that even if your house isn't in one of those areas and a builder tries to build somewhere else in an area that is covered by one of these overlays, which cover three quarters of the entire area of the Shire, then he can nominate other areas of the Shire which he says will never be built on again. And your house and the ground that you were going to build your granny flat on or you were going to divide into another lot so you could sell it off and fund your retirement, you won't be able to do that. And the developer and the local authority don't even have to tell you that without even asking you, they have taken away your property rights. And suddenly you'll find when you go and look at the property register, there is a restriction, a restrictive covenant on your land. And you might complain about it when you find it. In that case, they'll make you sign an agreement to that restrictive covenant, or they'll put even more restrictions on you, this time compulsorily. I have read the legislation. That is what it does. And there is a clear intention among the International Committee for Local Environmental Initiatives, ICLI, to which nearly all local authorities in Australia belong to implement this Agenda 21 program right across Australia. So if you think that your rights in your property are protected by your constitution, then think again. Because what your constitution says is that if any of your property rights are taken away by the federal government, then they have to pay you just compensation. So you may think, well, that's all right then. If they do this to us, they've got to pay except it's not going to work that way because state and local authorities are not, stupidly, they're not bound by the Constitution. So they will take your property rights away as they took the property rights of uh, Mr. Spencer away, Peter Spencer, the farmer, a couple of years ago. He'd been farming as his father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather had on the same land for years and years, beautifully kept, safely managed, correctly husbanded. Along comes the local administration in New South Wales and says, right, this has been zoned without your consent, without your knowledge, as a carbon sink, so that Kevin Rudd can comply with the fatuous promises he made at Kyoto, and therefore you may no longer farm your own land, and no, we don't have to pay you any compensation, because although we're acting as agents of the federal government, because it's us, we don't have to pay you any. So this is already happening. In South Australia, there are natural resources management boards going around saying to farmers, if you shift a rock, we can fine you. And they're regulating their water supply so that they're driven off the land. They're ordering them to plant rows of spiny acacia bushes along every roadside so that when the next bushfire comes along, it, the spiny acacia will explode. It's called the kerosene bush, not without good reason and the whole of the lofty ranges will go up in smoke. 
that that is their intention, ladies and gentlemen. They want to drive farmers off the land because commercial farming is to be banned under Agenda 21. Irrigation of land for crops is to be banned. Grazing of stock is to be banned. The use of herbicides and pesticides is to be banned. They're working on this because they want to reduce the global population to just one billion out of the present seven billion. That's Bill Gates's figure. Of course, he would like to be among the one billion, I expect. <laughs> and then there's Ted Turner, who says, no, we can't afford even one billion. We must have just 300 million. We must kill 95% of the population. So Bill Gates says, oh, fine, I tell you what, what we'll do is we have a vaccination program. And you know, he's just started a vaccination program in Africa. So watch out for interesting changes in the population there, if he is allowed to get away with it. You may think all this sounds completely crazy. Indeed, the DLP, when I first came to this part of the world to do this tour, they said, please don't mention the words Agenda 21, because everybody who mentions those words is thought to be a pointy head. Well, I'm sorry, but it's a real document. These plans, the Europe Adela Council's bio-registration system, these are real documents. The regulations imposed by the Natural Resources Management Board of South Australia are real documents. The restrictions on building near the coastlines in Victoria on the ground that the sea level might rise and, and wipe them out, these are real restrictions. It is already actually happening here in Australia in the name of Agenda 21. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to call it what it is so that you can go and check what I've told you and find out that this threat is coming and then get behind the one party in New South Wales that's going to stand up and say no to this and that is of course the Democratic Labour Party whose policy is to abolish the carbon tax altogether and to hold Tony Abbott to account when he promises to do just that to abolish the mineral resources rent tax which is a tax not on uh, the, the big boys who run the mines it's a tax on mine workers who, to me, are the heroes of labor, the men who dig the darkness underground to bring us light. And they are being driven overseas. You heard from Paul just now how an exploration company from Australia thinks it's found, may perhaps have found, one of the largest deposits of shale oil in the world, and how it is going, talking of going overseas to get capital because nobody here will want to invest in such a project because of the mineral resources rent tax. So you have to get rid of these ridiculous restrictions on the sensible mineral development of Australia. And these senseless restrictions on farmers, these water restrictions, farmers make virtually no difference, even in a drought, to the flow of water down the creeks and into the rivers and out into the sea. It's about 1%. It's not worth regulating it, and therefore it shouldn't be regulated, but it is. So their stock go without water, their crops go without water, they are driven from the land one by one. That is your future, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow Agenda 21 and those who promote it to carry on for a single instant longer. They're going to bring back communism. Individual rights, they say. This is from the vice chairman of ICLE, that body I was talking about, of local environmental initiatives, the local authorities beavering away to implement this supposedly voluntary UN program by compulsory laws in their districts. Individual rights must take a back seat to the collective. That includes property rights. It includes the rights to farm your land or mine the resources under it. The collective must come first. That's the new cry. It's the old cry of communism. It's back. And of course, world government. Now, of course, when I first said the UN is planning to set up a world government, the first reaction of the hard left, who knew perfectly well that that is exactly what the UN is trying to do, was to say, well, of course, Moncton is just a conspiracy theorist, a rabid conspiracy theorist. That was the phrase <coughs> in one of the left-wing journals. So I actually had to produce evidence of this. And here it is. The September the 15th, 2009 draft of the Copenhagen Climate Treaty. Fortunately, as a result of exposure that I and others gave to this treaty, it failed at Copenhagen and did not proceed. But this draft, which is still available, get there quickly before the UN takes it away from its website, this draft provides 
a very clear insight into what the hard left worldwide are now trying to do. They're trying to set up a world government. There is the word in the treaty draft. It was going to have near unlimited powers of direct taxation over all the nations of Earth, direct environmental intervention, and direct control in all economic matters, and eventually in all matters. And in the 186 pages in which this government was set out, and exactly how it was going to be worked, and who was going to pay, and how it was going to be regulated, and who was going to be in charge of it, do you think that the words election, democracy, ballot, or vote occurred even once? Do you think you, the mere people, were going to be given a say? Well, you weren't. It was going to be me and others like me, the governing class, who were going to be in control of you, the people. This was going to be the end of democracy. The governing class doesn't like listening to you lot, because what do you know about anything? Absolutely nothing. Look at you, pudding-faced. That's their attitude. Now, you know, because I've shaken you all by the hand when you came in, I don't think that. I think that democracy is something we should value something we should hold on to as precious. It's taken a thousand years to get it. The last thing we want to do is throw it away in the next 20 or 30. But we will if we sleepwalk our way into Agenda 21, because people say, well, you mustn't mention it or you'll be regarded as a pointy head. These things are actually happening all over Australia now, which is why I've given you example after example after example, while also showing you the ideological basis. This is a slide, for instance, from Bill Gates. And Bill Gates, as you know, wants to reduce the world's population to one billion because he says the damage done by CO2 can only be addressed if we reduce the world's population. Now, hands up all those of you who would like to be part of that reduction in the world's population. <laughs> I see no volunteers. Shame upon the lot of you. You're supposed to be saving the planet. Now, of course, you don't really need to do any such thing. The planet was triumphantly saved 2,000 years ago, and it doesn't need to be saved again. <laughs> so you're all off the hook this time. But that's because I am Mr. Nice Guy here. The governing class of the world is not so nice as me. This is the class which worldwide brought in by be butchering. They don't care about people or human life. Not anymore. I'm sorry to have to say it so bluntly, but they really don't. The world has changed and horribly changed just in my lifetime, away from the notion that each individual was kept in being by a continuous act of the will of Almighty God and was therefore of precious and unique importance. That notion has gone. Now you're just a hunk of meat and you're a predator upon the planet, you're a parasite on the planet, and as many of you as possible must be done away with and regulated out of existence before they eventually just kill you. <laughs> and this may sound, I keep saying this, this may sound extreme. And the reason why it sounds extreme is because it is extreme. <laughs> but that is what they are planning to do. That is what the Greens are really all about. <coughs> I call them the traffic light tendency. The Greens too yellow to admit they're really red. <laughs> <laughs> Now here is a map, just to show you that we're not talking about vague suggestions. We're talking about actual plans drawn up by the Agenda 21 <coughs> unit in the United States, which, as I say, is driving a lot of this worldwide. This map, all the areas in red, which is most of the map, are areas where no humans will, in any circumstances, ever again be permitted to go. That's the plan. In yellow, those are areas where you may go exceptionally on very rare occasions, but only after you have sought, obtained, and heavily paid for a permit from the Politburo. Otherwise, you can't go there. The very few areas that are not marked either in red or in yellow are mostly military installations to keep the remaining few areas where the last few humans allowed to exist in America will live in what they call human settlement zones and what we will call concentration camps. All ideas of freedom and individual liberty will have gone if this is implemented. Fortunately, however, the United States has a radically democratic constitution. No treaty 
to enact any such rubbish as this can be approved or adopted by the United States unless a two-thirds majority, that's 67 senators out of the 100, vote for it. And they were expected to vote for it. They were expected to vote for the UN's Biodiversity Treaty because when people like me had gone along and said, but this is enacting Agenda 21, uh, they'd been told, don't worry about anybody who mentions the phrase Agenda 21, they're just pointy heads. But somebody got hold of this map and sent it round to every senator and said, this is what these colour schemes mean. And this map meant that in the last hour before the vote was due to be taken, senators from all over America said, no, we will not ratify this. They had been expected to ratify the UN's Biodiversity Treaty, and they did not do so. Your government, of course, and mine, did so. So watch out. This is what's coming, if they are allowed to get away with it. And if you sit back and let them. Because no dissent is going to be permitted. Here is the introduction to uh, the Agenda 21 document by the UN. There are specific actions which are intended to be taken by every person on Earth. You will obey all of you, or else. Now, I'm sorry to have spoken with such feeling about that. Now, most of you will not have realized that this is already being implemented here in Australia, so I wanted to make it very clear to you that it is. Now, the excuse that they're using to bring all this nonsense in is climate change. Now you begin to see the context, why they've been bothering to bang on and on about climate change in the media all the time. It's because climate change is the excuse or pretext for Agenda 21. In the South Australia um, Environmental Action Plan, a Natural Resources Management Plan, as it is called, it's a short document, but climate change is mentioned 64 times in that document because that's the excuse they're using. We have to stop the warming of the planet, which, as you will see later, is not really happening at quite the rate they expected it to do.